thank you very much for inviting me here today. So I'm Liz Woodward and I come with many different hats on. Um, I come with my smallholders hat, uh, my environmental sort of education hat, and I've also worked with local authorities um, in environmental health as well. There's a small charity um, in Newtown on Welsh borders, the Mid Wales Food and Land Trust, and they originally established this idea of school farmers markets and how we can get schools involved. Um, and they invited us, um, because they are so small, to see whether we could expand this project um, across England a little bit more. So in 2009 we sort of piloted the idea and it's gone from strength to strength, working in different areas of the country. Um, so far over 100 school farmers markets. Myself, I'm based up in the Peak District. So I've been working across Derbyshire with nine schools in the last year, but we also work down in London, um, we're in Warwickshire, we're up in the North East in Durham, so there's lots of different activities going on. Personally, I work in a lot of villages where services have disappeared and the school is the main focus of the local community. There's no shops, there's no post offices left. There's also, um, particularly in some of the more rural areas, a lot of small producers and micro producers that find it very difficult to actually market their produce. Children have become much more disconnected you know, from the food chain and understanding how it's actually produced. And that's been shown up in lots of different sort of surveys where you're asking children where their food comes from and they say the supermarket, which is, really sad. Um, but also the need for community cohesion and we found that with school farmers markets it's really sort of encouraged that cohesion in these communities. Now all of these markets are different, um, they all have different themes, they're in different seasons. Um, but one thing to remember when you're sort of approaching schools um, thinking about the weather and the timing, when they might sort of do the project work. What, you know, what is their capacity? Everyone says the curriculum is packed, we haven't got time to do different projects. Health and safety, obviously a lot around food hygiene, um, you've got photo permissions, you, your risk assessments that you're doing, whether Ofsted are, are doing inspections in the area. And I have to say, Ofsted have been really supportive of School Farmers Market project. Um, and how it can really sort of develop the relationships with that school and with the local community. Um, the unexpected illness in schools, um, you know, you might have to cancel it at the last minute. Parking, big issues with schools, you know, where do people park? So thinking around these um, before, you know, you actually get to work on the, the project itself. One thing that I'd say is all of these projects are really, really successful, everybody learns from them, and there's different scales of um, school farmers markets, but basically we try to encourage each school to maybe have about eight local producers, and then they have their own school <coughs> store as well, where they're making, growing, selling their own produce. So it's a great opportunity for schools um, to actually fund um, other sustainable projects in school and once we've done the initial support with the schools that this project is self-sustaining which is um, the, the beauty of it. So the paperwork, what do we do? Generally we try and sell the idea to the school as a business enterprise project. So there's lots of opportunities there for them. Um, we discussed with the head teacher, you know, when they might want to hold their farmers market. So some are held in February, March. Um, others are held at Easter. Others are held um, in the summer before the summer holidays, and then fitting in with harvest as well. Particularly, we support with booking producers. So we look firstly word of mouth. You know, is there anyone associated? With school who's a local producer who might want to have a store. We don't want to tread on any toes there. You know, we help with actually looking whether it's um, through sort of web searches, going to local markets, going to local farmers markets to see what producers might want to get involved. We talk to local authorities 
to see who's on the waiting list for some of the markets so that they get an opportunity to learn their actual skill. There's also, we talk to local authorities about new businesses, new micro businesses that could actually benefit from it. So as a result of this, we've um, developed a resource pack that we can provide to schools and they have eight weeks leading up to their farmer's market. So they look at every element, so they look at the elements of um, finance, of marketing, of planning, of producing. Um, they have um, an activity that they do each week, there's a few suggestions there. We do all the linkages to the curriculum um, for the school. Um, and then we have other <coughs> contacts and other resources that the schools can use and get in touch with. And we particularly want to encourage them to get in touch with your local market to help produce that and work in partnership. So any school, they don't need us to necessarily support them, but if they think they'd like to do a farmer's market, they can access these resources um, via our websites and talk to us about it. But particularly food hygiene and health and safety. Um, we work closely um, with Derbyshire um, Authority, um, it was Derbyshire Dales um, and their environmental health department to develop some guidance on food safety and hygiene um, because that is, if you like, one of the most frequently asked questions is about safety and hygiene with regard to the school farmers markets. We have lots of lovely feedback. One of the things the producers say is actually um, they make more money in an hour and a half or two hours um, than they do perhaps spending a whole day at the farmer's market. So they have a concentrated footfall. We try and say have only eight producers, but every one of those producers is to be different at the school farmer's market, so they're not in competition with each other. Some schools haven't quite learned yet, they think, oh, we've got to have those producers, but then, you know, each of those producers don't make quite so much money if you have too wide variety. Um, so it works like that. And just to give you some idea, these are really small schools in the feed district. Um, some make £150, others, you know, £347 in just a couple of hours after school. And typical sort of producer takings, um, anywhere between, you know, £100 and £200. Um, quite often um, the meat producers that we have there and making, you know, 250 pounds, something like that. So, you know, it's really worth their while. They're really introducing their products, um, you know, to their local community. We do evaluation with the children. It's very important. You know, what did they learn from it? You know, what are their top tips? What did they enjoy most? Um, be happy. I like that. That's a really good top tip from them. But particularly the advertising um, of their market. So this is where local market can really sort of come in and help promote the school ones. But they particularly like helping the producers, working with each other, making money uh, and sampling the products as well. So just to finish, it's real, real life learning. It's really, really important for children to actually have that. It's a very sort of sustainable project. But I think particularly important, it is encouraging this community cohesion and providing outreach after school opportunities. It creates a real buzz and a real excitement in that community. So um, I'd love you to have more school farmers markets um, in your areas. Um, if you want to find 